All right, this is Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 22, where we're going to compare the size of the product based on the size of the factors. Uh, basically, it's kind of common knowledge that students will say, oh, multiplying makes the answer get bigger. And sure enough, in this case, if you start off with a 3, multiply by 4, you end up with 12, which is bigger than the 3 that you started off with. And if we reverse that even, so 4 times 3, well, the answer is still 12. And sure enough, that when you started off with the 4, you multiplied by the 3, you get 12, which is bigger than the 4 you began with. So what seems to be like common knowledge and totally true, that multiplying makes the answer get bigger... Uh, in this lesson, we learned that that is absolutely not always true. Uh, so now I hope I've got your interest peaked. Let's get going. So I've got a couple of problems here, and I'm going to take this one and put it aside for a second because we don't need them right, right now. And so what you'll notice here is I've got 4 fourths times 12. In other words, 1 times 12. Then I've got 3 fourths times 12, and then I've got 5 fourths times 12. So I've got something that's 1, one, one uh, 4 fourths is equal to 1. So I've got something, so you'll notice the 12 is all the same. I'm tongue tied here. The 12 is all the same. The difference is here I'm multiplying by 1, here I'm multiplying by less than 1. And here I'm multiplying by greater than 1. And let's see what happens in each of these three cases. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And first let's multiply 4 fourths times 12. That equals 48 fourths. And that equals 12. Alright, so when you start off by multiplying by 1, you get the same number. You, we started with multiplying by 12, and we ended up getting 12, and that's because we multiplied by 1. Well, let's scoot over, and let's see what happens if we multiply by 3 quarters. So we're going to do 3 fourths times 12, and that's equal to 36 fourths, and that's equal to 9. And then I'm going to just move on to this next one here, 5 fourths times 12. So we've got 5 fourths times 12, that's equal to 60 over 4, and that is equal to 15. So now let's take a step back and, and take a look at what happened here, what transpired. In all three cases, we multiplied by 12. All right, and that's the thing. In this case, the 12 stayed the same. In this case, the 12 got smaller. And in this case, the 12 got bigger. I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. All right, so let's just hold on to that. And we're going to zoom out a little bit. And let's bring in our next set of problems here and we'll zoom in and let's do this all right so one fourth I mean four fourths times three one third yeah I'm still tongue-tied what's up with that so let's see four fourths times one third that's equal to four twelfths and four twelfths reduces or simplifies to one third Let's just hold on to that and move on. So let's see, 3 fourths times 1 third. Now teachers and parents, I'm going through this math really pretty darn quick, so you may need to pause and rewind and let your students um, catch up with my, my mathematics that I'm doing here. So I'm multiplying and I get 3 over 12 or 3 twelfths, and that equals 1 fourth. And we're just going to hold on to that and move on to this last example. So we've got 5 fourths times 1 third. When we multiply, we get 5 twelfths. And that does not simplify at all. And now, 
I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Now let's take a look at these three examples. And again, in all three cases, we multiplied by one-third. Here, it stayed the same. One-third is still one-third. Here, it got smaller. Now, teachers, a lot of students think that one-fourth is bigger than one-third. Not true. So you're going to have to remind them that one-fourth is smaller than one-third. So here it got smaller. And then again, here it got bigger. So uh, one-third is less than five-twelfths. So five-twelfths is bigger than one-third. So now let's zoom out and we can look at all six examples here. Let's see if I can get them all to fit on the same page there. Good. So what happened? Well, in the two cases where they stayed the same, 12 stayed 12, 1 third stayed 1 third, we multiplied by 1 because 4 fourths is equal to 1. Now, in the two cases where our answer, our product, got smaller, 12 became a 9, 1 third became a 1 fourth. So in both cases, they got smaller. We multiplied by a fraction that was less than 1. So here we multiplied by something that equaled 1. Here we multiplied by something that was less than 1. And then the last example where these two examples the product got bigger. 12 became 15 and 1 third became 5 twelfths. In both cases the product got bigger and in both cases, we multiplied by a number that was more than 1, or greater than 1. All right, now that's the key lesson that we want our students to learn in this lesson here. When you multiply by 1, it, the product stays the same. When you multiply by a fraction less than 1, the product gets smaller. And when you multiply by a fraction greater than 1, the product gets bigger. 1 stays the same. Less than 1, it gets smaller. More than 1, it gets bigger. Alright, let's put this into some practice. So that previous slide was really the big heart of this video. And so these, we're just going to kind of whip, whip through a couple of examples. Um, so the, here it says, look at the inequalities in each box. Choose a, a single fraction that we can write in all three blanks that would make all three number sentences true and explain how we know this would be true. Well, first thing we're going to look at, we're going to zoom in here, we can see that we have two-thirds and two-thirds. But this alligator mouth is a greater than symbol, so that means we need this number, this side, to be bigger than two-thirds. Similarly, we've got, let's see, a four and a four, but we've got a greater than symbol. So we need this left side to be greater than the right side. And same story here. We need the left side to be greater than the right side. So in all three cases, we need to multiply by something that would make the product get bigger. So what's an example of a number that would make the product get bigger? So what, what factor would make the product get bigger? Would multiplying by 1 make it get bigger? Would multiplying it by a fraction, oh, less than 1, oh, make it get bigger? Or would multiplying it by a fraction greater than 1 make the product get bigger? Now, uh, the answer is 
something greater than one. And I just chose as an example seven-fifths. So choose a single fraction that we can write in all three locations. Seven-fifths would work. Really, any fraction, as long as it was greater than one, would work. And our last example for this video, uh, let's see, blueprints in Blueprints, an architect's firm drew everything at 1 24th the actual size. The windows uh, actually measure 4 by 6, and the doors actually measure 12 by 8. What are the dimensions in the drawing? So essentially, we need to figure out what is 1 24th the original size. And what that means is we're going to do, for the 4 by 6, we're going to do 1 24th times 4 and 1 24th times 6. And then for the 12 by 8, I really don't like that time sign. I'm going to put the word by there. That's a little bit better. By. And then 12 by 8, we're going to do 1 24th times 12 and 1 24th times 8. And all this is going to give us our um, sizes of the drawings. So doing it kind of quickly because at this point stage in the game, we kind of know what we're doing here. So let's see. 1 24th times 4, that's 4 24ths. That simplifies to 1 6th. And then 1 24th times 6 is equal to 6 24ths, and that simplifies to 1 4th. And then we're going to still move over here. And then we've got 1 24th times 12 is 12 over 24, which is 1 half. And then lastly, we've got 1 24th times 8 is 8 24ths, which is equal to 1 third. And so I'm going to zoom out, and that tells us that instead of the 4 by 6 in real life, it becomes a 1 6th by 1 4th in the drawing. Now that would be 1 6th, um, 1 6th foot by one-fourth foot, all right? And since this, the directions don't say we need to turn everything into inches, we can leave it like this, but I'm gonna show you the answers in inches in a second. And then our door, I believe it was, was it a door? Yeah, the door becomes one-half foot by one-third foot, and that's the drawing of the door. So the drawing of the window is right here, and the drawing of the door is right here. Now if for some reason you want the answer in inches, a sixth of a foot is two inches, and a fourth of a foot is three inches, so that's that answer. And a half of a foot equals six inches, and a third of a foot equals four inches, and that's that answer. Whew, a lot of multiplication there. And I went pretty quick. So you may have to pause and rewind, pause and rewind to make sure you kept up with all of the math that I showed there. I'm just showing you the process. And that wraps up this Grade 5, Module 4, Lesson 22 video where we are comparing the size of the product based on the size of the factors.